Good morning, everyone. My name is Becky Bloss. I am one of the um, training and consulting team at LIU. Um, I will be hosting today along with my co-host, who is going to introduce herself. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jess Miller, and I will be helping Becky out today, and I am also a TAC member here at the IU. I'm going to, I wanted to let you see my face to get started, um, but I'm going to actually turn off my video until the end um, because we have quite a few participants. So um, I'll put my picture back up for you. Um, some of you might be new to this uh, method of training our webinars, and it's definitely new to us as well. So they're just some housekeeping things that um, we would like to go over with you so you have a sense of how this is going to work and um, where the resources are that you can find. Um, Nicole will be dropping the slide deck into the chat so that if you want to access the hyperlinks, you can absolutely do that. This is our team here at the IU. <clears throat> um, it has been a very busy 10 days and this entire group of people has worked uh, collaboratively to put together the webinars, the Learn On website. It has just been an amazing um, fast paced time for us, but we hope that the materials that we've put together will be supportive for you as you are moving into something new. Some meeting norms as we are uh, proceeding with these webinars. Um, the chat, the microphone, and the camera, um, we have disabled those because there are so many people attending um, that it would just be overwhelming for everyone to be able to chat at the same time. However, we do have the question and answer pod. So please feel free if you have questions. Um, Jess and the other panelists are available to help answer those questions. If we can't answer a question for you, we will make sure that we find an answer if we can to get back to you. Also, if you have questions and you don't want to ask in this forum, we will be having office hours after this webinar that you can follow up and ask your questions there as well. Um, you can also raise your hand, um, which is part of the participant window, if you would like to use your microphone uh, to ask a live question. Some resources for you at the IU, Act 48 credit, um, you will be redirected at the end of the webinar to a form that you need to complete and you will need your PPID so that you can get your Act 48 credit. The Act 48 credit is offered only for Pennsylvania educators, but that doesn't mean if you're outside of the state that you can't continue to be part of this webinar. Um, we also have an archive of all the webinars that we're doing that is posted on the um, LIU Learn On website, and there is a bit.ly for that. And our general site, the Learn On website, is there as well for you to access for not only the webinars, but um, resources in a variety of areas and initiatives that we are addressing as an IU. Some changing expectations as we are all being changed to a new normal. Um, continuity of education, your district is deciding whether they are going to work on review and enrichment or moving toward planned instruction. And that is what you'll need to um, be following as the district guidelines. We also must be aware of um, our adherence to FAPE, free appropriate public education. You must be considering how what you are providing um, ensures that everyone has equal access to the same opportunities. The challenge with this is 
um, meeting the needs of students who perhaps do not have internet capabilities or the resources or tools at home to be able to do virtual learning. Hmm. Additionally, think less is more. Prioritize what you really need to address and balance that. Today, we're gonna to talk a lot about the social and emotional needs of our youngest learners and prioritizing that need. Um, for videos, it is important that people see your face, which is why I showed my face at the beginning. So you can at least make a connection with the voice, specifically for our youngest learners. They need to see you. Um, it gives them a sense of safety and security. Think in terms of the student and the number of minutes. So if you're teaching kindergartners and they're five or six years old, that's about the length of time you should be engaging with them online. Make sure that you're clear about what your objectives and expectations are for that time. And allow the time for students to complete any tasks that you need to address. Make sure you're also giving organized, sequenced instructions. So for today, what we hope to accomplish in this time is to identify some techniques and strategies that you'll be able to use with our littles. Um, we're thinking specifically for students pre-K to grade two, but of course, if you're outside that range, there are certainly strategies here that you can use. Um, and we're thinking about their emotional and social health. We're also thinking about ways that you can connect with families and to build that consistency. And we hope to offer you a lot of resources that will support your work as you're moving into this new kind of normal. We're also talking about scheduling, thinking about a schedule and a plan that's workable for the children, for the families, and for you. So first, we think it's really important that you just take a minute and take a deep breath. This has been overwhelming for everyone. And it's okay that you're feeling stressed. Please be patient with yourself. Allow yourself to give yourself some grace. Um, Jess gave an example of if you're on an airplane, they always advise you to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you take care of others. That's what you need to do. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, social media right now is full of good and bad. Um, so make sure you're balancing what you're seeing with the good and the bad. Um, be sure that you're sharing this very same idea with parents who are stressed and confused and are feeling like they don't know how to handle this, that it's okay. Whatever we do is what we're going to be able to do right now and we'll continue to learn and grow. We're all being vulnerable together. Make sure that you are um, authentic, be who you are. If you tell lots of jokes, tell jokes. Um, make it fun, make it humorous, engage the children and the families in the way that you normally would. Be who you are. Also consider your sphere of influence. You as the teacher are going to be able to provide for students, but you're providing for students in a very different way. You have no way right now to see if students are completing the work in the way that you would be able to monitor in a classroom. Also, you're going to be providing support to families, but again, you don't have that direct connection with families on a daily basis to be able to say, this is what we're doing, or this is how it looks. So your sphere of influence is right now focused on what you're doing and how you can do it the best that you can. You're going to provide resources, you're going to provide support, but mostly you have to think about you and how you can get yourself organized to do the best you can for those others who are in that sphere of influence. As we think about social and emotional health, think about the tools that you can use. Please take time to see each other. 
let the children see your face. They are scared and they don't know why. This is so new to them. Their parents don't know what's going on. Let them see you so that they feel safe and secure. One of the tools, of course, you can use is Zoom as we are, but also FaceTime, um, Seesaw, Google Classroom, Dojo, Remind, lots of other resources that your district may use or that you can use beyond just using Zoom to be able to see each other, to allow the children to see their friends. So how can we connect with children in meaningful ways to support their social and emotional health? Lots of people have been posting read-alouds. That's a great way to allow children to see you and to feel like they're back in the classroom. Maybe you could do a directed drawing, um, a share circle where everyone gets to answer the same question. We've been having um, TAC meetings in the morning and we are all answering a question together so that we're supporting ourselves with our own self-care needs sing songs together, finger plays, word games, um, think about nursery rhymes if you do nursery rhymes. Um, one of the ideas that I just heard this morning was using a sign-up genius, genius and planning to have lunch with small groups. Um, that's a nice way to connect. You can connect over FaceTime or Zoom to be able to do that. We want to make sure that our children have lots of ideas for taking care of themselves. Some children need to be able to move. So obviously Go Noodle is a great um, resource that you can share with parents. What we're providing today are things that we hope you can turn around and share with parents so that parents have resources to use as well. Um, the music and movement link are some songs that have dance moves with them. Cosmic Kids Yoga is obviously a yoga um, platform that children can engage in yoga. Um, calm music, if you go to YouTube, you can find calming music that supports um, allowing children to who might have too much energy to be able to take a break and just breathe. Um, there's a parents breathing techniques website that's very good that shows a variety of breathing. I find myself often just taking time to do um, the lazy eight breathing or the infinity breathing which is a sideways eight shape in and out um, that's a good one because it crosses the midline, so it engages both parts of the brain. And then 50 calm down ideas. Again, share these with parents so that parents have the support that they need for what they're doing at home. Also think about um, suggesting some fidget tools like Legos, Play-Doh, Silly Putty, Slime, Velcro, um, the kinds of tools that might really support children who need to be fidgeting with something. In our hands-on slide, we're thinking, yes, certainly about math, but we're also thinking about engaging children in fine motor skills. We want them to have both gross motor activities and fine motor activities. Um, we shared some pictures of things like cotton balls and stones or pebbles, beans, um, Legos, little race cars. These links take you to some online manipulatives that children can use. Um, think about paper cups or plastic cups that they can stack, things with which they can build and create, repeated kinds of movements that can support and calm, um, lining things up, um, anything that gives children the opportunity, excuse me, the opportunity to engage in a repeated motion that might provide that calm 
for them if they're feeling stressed at this time. Just like adults need choice, we feel that children need to have choice. So you might want to provide choice in your lessons as you're moving forward and giving children the opportunity to engage. This talks about um, a high tech choice with watching a, view, a YouTube clip and then using some online manipulatives and then sending the video clip back to you of how the student has engaged with this. A low tech choice using teacher's directions that might be sent via email and you do the the children do the activity with paper and pencil or finally the no tech choice. So again, we're trying to meet all of those needs of all of those learners as we address our free and appropriate public education. Also for yourself, think about how you can offer choices, but you're not the one coming up with all of the ideas. How can you support um, a team? Do you work with other teachers who are the same grade level? If you do, could one person do the high tech choice this week? One person do the low tech choice? One person do the no tech choice? So you as a teacher are not having to do it all. Think about ways that you can collaborate with other members of the same grade level or a primary group. Think about how you can support your own social and emotional health by collaborating with others who are working toward the same goals. We also want to think about consistency. This is new, so it's important to, we know children need routines and consistency. We know that they function best when we provide those for children. Um, so try to keep some things in the new routine that might be similar to the old routine. If you start every day with a greeting, start every day with a greeting. Use familiar terms, my second graders would often hear me say things like, keep your nose to the grindstone. I would continue to use that as I was engaging with children at this point. Other examples, if you have a morning meeting procedure, get a morning meeting board, um, do a video of your morning meeting board, um, an end of the day checkout routine, a schedule that you follow that might be similar to the schedule that they are used to at school. Um, maybe you have a joke of the day. Maybe you have a certain child who's recognized as the helper of the day. Whatever you can do to be as consistent as you can. Another suggestion we have for you is to maybe start the day face-to-face -face or end the day face-to-face -face or maybe lunchtime face-to-face, -face. but try to give them the opportunity to see you once a day. It doesn't have to be for a long length of time, but so that they are at least making that connection with you on a daily basis. This example for scheduling is just that. It's a framework. It is not something that we um, feel like you have to take and address exactly the way we have it set up uh, because, of course, you're going to need to follow your district guidelines. Um, this is just, as I said, a suggestion, but maybe you're going to start at 10 with your morning meeting and that's when you do your live Zoom. The teacher in charge of that for all of first grade is going to be Mrs. Smith. At 1030, Mr. Little is going to be sending the pre-recorded tape via email or the pre-recorded session of the calendar time to parents. A read aloud can be any time between 11 and 2. Again, maybe a live Zoom time with two teachers, Mrs. White and Mrs. Kim, who are taking turns doing those read alouds. Think about offering some office time, a time when parents can come to you or children can check in with you. Um, maybe you want to plan some small group time um, that you can just say, okay, um, these five students are going to meet with me from one o'clock to 110 and have a very short small group time to check in with children. 
Maybe you have an end of the day routine. You can do a Google form that Mr. Jones is going to be in charge of for all of the first graders, or it can be a face-to-face. -face. Um, again, be gracious with yourself and be gracious with your children. They may or may not be present every time. Their parents may or may not know how to support them while you're doing this. Um, as you get better at it, as they get better at it, it's going to improve. You might need to give them more time at the beginning and then be able to back off as students and families become more accustomed to this routine. Make sure you're including large motor and fine motor activities, get the children away from the screens and engaging in activities that are developing the whole child. Some things to consider, again, just some reminders for you. Work as a team as much as you can. Share the work. You don't have to do it all yourself. Um, try to check in personally at least once a week. If you can do it daily, that's even better. You, remember, you can't force parents to participate. You're providing the opportunity. That's your sphere of influence right now. Um, and keep in mind that children might be, there might be five children in a home who need access to a computer and there's only one computer. So minimizing the amount of time, especially for our littles. And who has access to the technology, who has access to the materials that they need to have access to. We definitely want to help you. Um, that's why we're here, that's our job. So please feel free to email us. Uh, my email and Jess's email are right there for you. We are going to be moving to our office hours following this webinar. Um, so please feel free to come and join us in our office hour. We will be happy to have a one-to-one -one conversation with you during that time if that's supportive for you. If you have ideas or if there are things that you feel that you need from us beyond what's being offered, please let us know so that we can do what we can. If you want to meet with, you have your whole grade level team meet with us, we'll be happy to do that. Just let us know what you need. Jess, are there any questions that we need to be answering? So Becky, I was monitoring the question and answer pod while you were speaking, and there are some questions that seem to come up repeatedly that maybe we can speak to a little bit, but also I would encourage people to meet us at 10 o'clock for our office hours because we may not have the answers to these. One of the questions is, how do we do all of these great things and use these ideas with our students who have no technology at home? Um, and that's a question that has been brought up many times um, over this entire process. One thing that I found out that I did not know um, is many of the gaming systems that students may have in their house can be hooked up to many of these online platforms. So while they may not have the traditional iPad or computer at home, there might be other ways that you can work around this issue. So, and I'm, I'm by no means an Xbox Pro or any of those things, but there are ways that they can be connected to different platforms. So if you have a teenager at your house or, or something like that, they may be able to help you figure that out. Also maybe a Google search. As time consuming as it may be, the old fashioned phone call might have to come back into play. Um, good old snail mail. I know they're not ideal situations and they will take longer, but we kind of have to work with the audience in the situation we have. If if they don't have the tech, we're going to have to figure out a low tech way to meet those options for them. So maybe it's planning ahead of time for the week of activities that you have already possibly planned to present online, writing them up in a letter form and sending it, or making a phone call and explaining it. I'm sure people out there in this group are, have wonderful ideas of how to do that, um, so if, if you want to meet and talk more about this during office hours, I think we would definitely be open to being thought partners for you. 
um, again, we don't have all the answers, but we'll certainly try and help. Any other questions we should be addressing? Um, there's another question that came up about how can I teach reading online? They're not allowed to use video chats. I would suggest for you to visit the Learn On site. Over the next week, there are going to be five different presentations. One deals with phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, comprehension, and vocabulary. You may be able to get some ideas from those chats that deal specifically with each one of those topics. Or again, we're more than welcome to talk with you during office hours. Just looking to see if we have any other questions that have not been answered. Um, there was a question also about concerns when doing read alouds with permission or without permission from authors. And Nicole dropped a link into that um, for you to look from Scholastic into the chat. But also, it is my understanding that if you are using a closed platform, such as Zoom or Class Seesaw that's going directly to your classroom, you don't have to worry about those um, permission types of things quite as much as if you would if you were sending it out through an open channel like Facebook. However, maybe Nicole can jump on and maybe share a little more about that if possible, or any of the panelists. Sure, guys. Um, I would say if you are going to share a read aloud, I would definitely just check with the publisher first. Even if you're doing it on a closed platform, I really think that's best practice. Um, uh, if you're very curious about copyright um, and are concerned about that level of copyright infringement and really want to know more about which publishers have kind of released it for educators to do read alouds, I really highly suggest that you come to the next webinar. Um, with Melissa Pirro. She's really going to talk a lot about copyright and she has a lot of great resources which she's going to share um, with links to different websites that will show you who has released and opened it for anybody to read during this time and what the protocols might be. Thank you, Nicole. Anything else, Jess? Our time here is just about up because we need to vacate the Zoom room so the next presentation can come in. But as Becky said earlier, if you go back to that Learn On site, um, they will have our office hours listed, which are going to start at 10 o'clock. Becky and I will be available to help anyone out um, that has any questions or just to brainstorm together. We would love to help you. Uh, thank you for attending today. And Becky, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you, and thank you all for coming and being part of this webinar. There is um, an evaluation at the top of this slide um, that we would love to hear back from you. So please feel free to fill that out. Um, and when Nicole closes our meeting for today, um, you will be automatically redirected to the Act 48 form. So thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone.